Hello everyone and welcome back to Purse First Impressions. I am Bob the Drag Queen and today we are reviewing RuPaul's Drag Race UK Season 2 Episode 9. And let's just hope you're getting your cavities filled because we got a sweet <laughs> treat coming up for you. Her name is Miss Sugar K. Yes! Hey everyone! Hey Bob, thanks for having me. Oh, thank you. You have a such an iconic voice. I would recognize your voice anyway. I, it, it could be... <laughs> I could go 50 years without hearing your voice. Then I would hear you go, hey! And I'd be like, sugar cane? Yeah, it's annoying and loud. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know anything about that because my voice is what? soft and supple. Hey, wait, you know what? We need to talk about this gorgeous hair of yours. Is this the hair you've been wearing? Like, it actually looks really good today. <laughs> oh, 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 you're canceled. You're canceled. You're canceled now. No, you're it not looks good. Girl, apparently you're not allowed to say anything nice about this hair because the fans will come for you. Really? To quote Wendy Williams about this wig, <laughs> she's right. She's an icon and she is the moment. This wig is legendary and you fucking assholes at home can never, you will never, you <laughs> wish, honey, honey, let me see it right now, under. The question is, did you buy that at uh, Tina Burner's stoop sale? <laughs> <laughs> Tina Burner was throwing it away and I said, I'll take it. So I can't say nothing nice about it? It does look nice. Girl, take your own risk, okay? I'm just telling you, this wig is the most controversial <laughs> contestant on Drag Race since Sherry <laughs> No, you didn't. No, you didn't. This wig is the most controversial thing to happen to Drag Race since Sherry Pizzo. So good luck saying anything about this wig, girl. She is... This, this wig is more controversial than Mimi on first picking up India Farrah. Yeah. This wig is more controversial than Derek Berry calling me ratchet, okay? This wig is more controversial than, than the entire royal family, okay? Well, I will say that that wig is booked more than us queens right now, so she's booked and blessed. <laughs> Listen, this is our mad dash. I'm telling you, me and this wig are great. I love this wig, but I would like to not bring it into my next series after I'm done with Purse First Impressions Drag Race UK Season 2. So I have 50,000 followers left to go. If y'all get me these 50K before next week, I will get rid of this wig. I'm telling y'all, I currently have 353,000 subscribers. If y'all help me get this to 400K, <laughs> I'll send it to James. James has accepted the challenge, and we will see what happens. I, love I might just start sending it to random girls so we can all just do a photo shoot with it. Yes, I yes, that is hilarious. We are the world. We all see the world. We are the children. The children. <laughs> now let's talk about off the bat. The first thing I'm noticing, Lawrence is still hot. Like Lawrence can like off the bat, they're all like he. And Lawrence is like, just what, throwing what's daggers. What's funny, bitch? What's I, I, I don't see what's funny. She is not having it at all. And I live for it because, I mean, she did do them dirty. Uh, you know, so, and like, they're supposed to be friends. So I would be pissed too. I would still be mad about it, like, today. So I don't blame her one bit for being pissed at that shit. Apparently, Lawrence got bullied off Twitter. Like, people are mad that Lawrence... But I'm telling you, let me tell you right now. It's, this is just... Anyone from Drag Race tell you this. It is different when you are on Drag Race. Everyone's like, it's just a game. Bitch, my feelings are still fucking hurt. Yeah, this is a game, but bitch, my feelings aren't a game. Those shits yeah. are real. And now I'm mad at you, Ellie. Ellie D from Dundee. I'm bitch, I'm mad. <laughs> so now what's good? And now I can't... Y'all, it's, it's a week for y'all. Y'all don't realize... When, at the top of the episode, that is the end of yesterday. So it's literally, yeah. they, Ahura just got eliminated and then they walked into the workroom. It was not, it was not a week for them. It was probably maybe two hours. Maybe at the longest. I think the line that gets me the most is when Lawrence looks over at Ellie and goes, you didn't win the badge. Was it worth it? That was gold. 
just pure gold. But you didn't win a badge. Was it worth it? I was like, damn. Lawrence is out for <laughs> bitch. Lawrence just went Braveheart <laughs> on, on these hoes, girl. Lawrence grabbed some red paint, some blue paint, and said, "It's going down." You know, um, I love taste because. She's the only one who's calling this out, like, as it's happening. Um, she yeah. doesn't care. She's just basically like, you know, if you got talent, you got talent, right? But she's living for the drama and just dead that Lawrence has called her out. And I think that's hilarious. I think her confessionals during this whole point had me rolling. I live for that. Well, I also have a theory that might be wrong, but I, I don't think Taze thinks she can win at this point. I don't genuinely think Taze... And, and the weird thing is, I genuinely think that Ellie Diamond thinks she has a chance, which is wild to me because she has <laughs> zero wins. I and won. she's like, these girls better be afraid of me. Bitch, for what reason? <laughs> what? Why? For why? This girl, besides the fact that she's a linebacker, that's the only reason, girl. girl she said. <laughs> I was like... These girls like, better watch out for me. Oh, is he, what, what are you gonna come up in the last episode? And girl. I mean, there is a chance, but I think I, I think Taste is like I'm just buying my time and having fun at this point. And Ellie's like I'm still in the game. And we're all yeah. like, <laughs> Oh, Ellie, I don't fucking know. Uh, as, as soon as RuPaul announced they're doing a puppet show, I was like, I can guarantee you that Lawrence is gonna get Ellie's puppet. I was like. Before <laughs> Lawrence even stuck her hand in that hole, I was like, oh, Lauren's gonna get Ellie Puppet. And, and lo and behold, girl, she got that fucking puppet. So they're doing the puppets, right? And still, Lawrence can't let it go. Lawrence is still, like, she is mad. And I'm like, girl, at some point, you gotta give up the ghost. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because she said she wasn't gonna, she was gonna keep it nice and like peachy or whatever. She wasn't really gonna say anything about it. But then she totally went, like, she made it, like, a moment, right? In the whole puppet thing. Yeah. So I was like, eh, girl, she's, we'll see. I mean, she, like you said, it literally has been just hours. Like, not even 24 yeah. hours since that happened. So she's still pissed. She made, like, a, a good point, right? Because she was like, uh, it could have been me. Like, I could have been the one that sent, got sent home. And so I think And that I'm sure Ellie was like, bitch, I'm just glad. I think Ellie's goal was like, bitch, I'm just trying to make it not me. I'm not, yep. I wasn't, I was just trying to make sure I don't go home. So part of me feels like Ellie and Lawrence are both coming at it from a really like, I mean, there is a, you you do need to be a little selfish when doing RuPaul's Drag Race. I do believe that. There's a moment in there where, where Ellie was like, well, I'm just trying to make sure that I can make it to the finale. And then Lawrence like, bitch, I could have gone home. And Ellie's probably like, yeah, I know. <laughs> bitch, I know. It would have been better for her. <laughs> <laughs> So what ends up happening is Bimini Bamboolash wins the puppet show. Do you agree with that win? A hundred percent. I thought she was hilarious. Uh, she impersonated uh, Lawrence like to the T. I couldn't with her like crazy raspy voice. Uh, it was the yeah. only one that was like really fun and lighthearted. Cause the mini challenges are just supposed to be stupid, right? You're just supposed to act like as dumb as possible. Um, exactly. And she was like just having fun. So I definitely agree uh, that she should have won that one. It was cute. Also anyone from the UK, specifically Scotland, please tell me what does Ohai the new, what does that mean? Because Lawrence said it during her Meet the Queens and then Ellie Diamond said it. They were like, the, the, badge, the crown's going to London. The crown's going to Scotland. Ohai the new. I don't know what that means. I don't even know how to spell it to Google it. Okay, so they go, so it's going to the rehearsal with, with Michelle Visage, right? Yeah. So off the bat, Ellie and Lawrence are both having a hard time with their lines. And Ellie is like, it's because of Lawrence. Is that fair? <laughs> I, yes, I would say yes. Because like, if you're doing a scene with a partner and you're relying on them to do, then if you're listening for the cue um, and they don't give it to you, you don't know what's happening, right? Like, and by the way, this is one of the episodes, y'all, if you're watching, like, you have to, I think you have to be from the UK to get this because, like, I was everything. Yeah. I was completely lost as well. I didn't know. I was like, this writing is terrible. There is nothing entertaining about this. And, like, I was like, who wrote this shit? I was like, these poor girls are trying to make this funny. And I was like, I just didn't get it. Like, before it even happened, Michelle was like, this will be the most iconic thing in British Drag Race history. And I was like, okay, <laughs> that's a big, that's a big promise. 
And then I watched it, and I don't know if it's because I don't get any of the references, but I was like, this is fine. Like, y'all are really gassed this up. RuPaul was like, this was the best thing. I was like, was it? I heard thing, Michelle wrote it, because she was very protective. <laughs> she was like, it's an icon. It's, it's right, it's an icon, and it is the moment. <laughs> I cannot, she wrote it, bitch. I live. Michelle had a, Michelle just seemed to have a lot at stake Girl. with this sketch. Directed, <laughs> produced, and written by Michelle Visage. Tyler Perry Studios, girl. Tyler Perry Studios. <laughs> I did look up, so I looked up the, the famous scene from EastEnders, which is, there's, there, there, it's like the days of our lives of the UK. It's like the most famous soap opera there. And there's an episode where this one girl's yelling at this lady, and then she's like, she storms out and goes, I'm moving to Spain. And he goes, you're not moving to Spain. And then she gets outside, the woman stops, she goes, you can't move to Spain. And she goes, you can't tell me what you do. You're not my mother. And then as she's walking away, she goes, yes, I am. Okay. And then it goes, dun, 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 dun. Um, even just seeing that one minute clip on YouTube, I was like, this is iconic. Like even okay. just like the writing is brilliant. The acting was just so over the top and like she storms away. You're not my mother. Yes, I am. So I will say that that was, I do love they were, they were able to like put that in there. Uh -huh. But as someone who was watching and had to go back and find out the reference, mama, I was confused. Like mama, I was fully confused. Let, before we get into the wrong way, I want to do this. I want to do this. I realized something. Let's just see where taste in her interview, she talks a certain way during all of her runways. She was like, I am serving the children for the gods <laughs> today. Like, I am flapping my wings and I'm serving the children everything in life. They're gonna have everything. That is taste in every single one way. She's like, she's really selling. Like, like trying to sell us the garment on the run, whenever she has that runway. Selling, I mean like, Set, like she sold that uh those Brillo pads, those the the <laughs> was yeah. like, I'm out here wearing my Brillo pads look. These scours. And I was like, Girl. I live. Okay, so let, let's open up the deck. Let, let's go into the looks. And we discuss okay. all of the looks on Press First Impressions. Can I just say I'm gonna start with RuPaul's look in the workroom? <laughs> I like this look. I'm into this. I like it all but the beanie, girl. I was like, this is like, that beanie was like so from left field. I was like, how does this fit in? <laughs> I thought it was cute. I have a theory that RuPaul might be hiding some sort of a scar on their head. Um, because there's been a lot of like this right around the time that she wore the mask on ah. the finale. And then the wigs, the wigs and then this. Yeah. And I was like, but also I think she was, I, but I think she did come in bald at one point too. Now let's go into her, let's go into RuPaul's runway look. I don't love this look. I'm not crazy about it. She looks good, but I'm not like, I, don't know, I think RuPaul served some really gaggy looks this season. Yeah. Especially right when we got back from quarantine, she, she snapped. Like the episode after the seven month break, she snapped. But here she looks, she looks fine. I'm not like crazy about the dress right Yeah, now. it's cute. I mean, it's cute. It's just kind of like a, you know, like a simple dress, right? But she's still beautiful. Yeah. She's always beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. So now to the Americans watching, Panto is this type of like musical comedy stage production that usually happen around Christmas time. And there's like, they're really slapstick. There's like heightened acting, a lot of drag, but not like drag drag, but like goofy, like kind of ugly drag. Panto yeah. dames. So it's like, it's like, it's, it borders on clown. Like yeah. the the makeup that they do and the hair and the outfits border on being clowns. And uh, that's what a panto dame really is. And they usually often done by like famous, so they're bringing like a lot of famous British actors to play these, the panto dame in the show. So they're these, they're, they're, and they're usually done around Christmas time. So that's what a panto is. Like, anyone, anyone wondering, um, that's what it is. And apparently that he's behind, I, I did not know about this. Apparently, because panto shows are often geared toward families. It's like a family show. Uh -huh. So often, they'll, like, it's kind of like Blue's Clues or Dora the Explorer. They'll try to get the kids to engage. They'll be like, I'm looking for, you know, Lawrence Chaney. Does anyone know where Lawrence Chaney is? And they'll go, she's behind you. It's okay. like a, a, a popular trope in uh, panto shows. That I just, I just found out. I wish I wish I would have talked to you before I saw this episode because I went into this runway the first time watching it not with no idea what Panto was. And so when mm -hmm. all these girls walked out, I was like, what is happening? They look crazy. I hate all these looks. I, I didn't know. And I was like, I should Google this 
And I didn't Google it until after the fact. So that first one, I was like, what is happening? <laughs> I'm into the, to be honest, I was into the category. Now let's throw each look. Lawrence's look I like, I just don't like when people put things on their head. Like when there's an entire thing <laughs> on your head, I don't like that. So everything about Lawrence's look, except this massive sewing machine, <laughs> I like. That's so funny you say that. I actually did like that part. I was like, oh, this is cute. I was like, is it heavy? Like, I want to know how much that weighs. Um, it like. I mean, it's probably I mean? it's probably not really. It looks fake, but it just looks like she has a sewing machine on her head. It just looks <laughs> like there is an entire sewing machine <laughs> sitting on her head. Taste is so. I want to. I want to like help Taste with her padding. Because like with a body like this, this padding could be everything. Mm -hmm. If it was just a little more snooched in the waist and the waist and the hips were a little bit higher. Yeah. And I do agree. I, as I look, I looked up some more images of Panto Dame, and this does not seem to fit the category. And she does seem out of place. So I, I agree with the judges. She does seem out of place. It's too pretty. And I, and I, I and I like what Graham Norton said. He was like, Taze probably thought she went bananas. Taze probably <laughs> thought she was like. This is the craziest thing I've ever done. Yeah, I live for it because Grab was like basically like, oh, she thought she uh, she painted like Lawrence Cheney and she thought she finally <laughs> <laughs> was looking Panto. Um, yeah, I agree. She was so pretty. Like, I mean, well, pretty. You know what I mean? Pretty, pretty. She still looks beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah, like it didn't fit at all. It's definitely and like I said, without knowing what Panto was at first, this definitely stood out as like not matching everyone else. So let's go into Bimini Bamboo Lash, um, who is really just fucking it up. Like yeah. letting these hoes have it. She fits, she seems to really fit the category. I think a lot of times the Panto Dames are sometimes straight guys. So the walk was really on point. Like she's really doing a fucking great job. Since the beginning, like she's grown on me so much as the season has happened. And like this look when she came out, it was like, like totally, like you said, it's total pantone. Like I loved her walk, her like just her mannerisms because it usually is like straight men, right? Like, and so it was nice to yeah. see like her just really embody like what it was. Um, and she looks, she looks crazy. I mean, that pain is so out of control. But when I, was I love it though. all these things, when you were Googling like what they look like, that's what they look like. So yeah, yeah. she totally killed it. Um, okay, let's talk about Ellie Diamond. I do, Ellie Diamond's makeup is my favorite of the evening. I will say that. Yeah. Ellie has great makeup. What I don't love is, first of all, Ellie said I'm wearing the biggest hoop skirt I've ever worn. I'm like, that's the biggest hoop skirt you've ever worn? <laughs> that one? That's the biggest one? No. Okay. It's okay, not. the new. Um, but I hate this thing where you wear a petticoat that is not the same. Okay, a petticoat is the ruffly thing that goes underneath your dress, or sometimes they come in hoops. A hoop skirt or a petticoat, okay? It goes underneath. It's, it's sometimes made of tulle, crinoline, and it puffs the skirt up. When your petticoat or your hoop skirt is shorter than your skirt, your dress goes out and then it just falls straight down, which is what hers like is that. doing. And mm -hmm. that's, an, I don't like that. Yeah, I, that's the first thing I noticed when she walked is she turned the corner. And like, that is like one of my pet peeves. Like, I absolutely hate it. And I know like you find out later that it was a reveal. Um, and so the petticoat that she has on right now, that's short, is for the short dress underneath. Yeah. But like, it's like, if you're gonna do that, you have to add another petticoat and cut it. So the, so like exactly. It's, it's what you can do is you can add, reveal. you can add tool to the uh, last half of the one on the inside. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it just, it just didn't, it looks, it looks like she's wearing like her undergarments, the petticoat does it does is not the right size, and yeah. it just it, it it's it's something so small, and maybe only like a seasoned drag queen would be like ooh, or or a costume would be like wait girl your petticoat's too short, your your hoop yeah. skirt's too short, but it really takes the look down in my yeah. opinion. But aside from that, I like this look a lot. I thought it was like I think of them all, it's like the most polished look, right? Like um, I, don't, I, I thought I it was beautiful. Don't know. I, I thought think Lawrence and Bimini both look so great. But I think it would maybe respond to this. Her makeup is just so good. Amazing. Ellie yeah. does have the best makeup on the runway, in my opinion. A hundred. A hundred. Yes. So here's my question. Who had the best look? Out of them, who was the best? Who's your favorite? Um, I would say Bimini was my favorite. Like it was just the it was the all the whole package. Like the look, mm -hmm. the embodiment of the character. Like that was my favorite. Hands down the best. 
Yeah, Bimini had a great evening. And if Lawrence didn't have that goddamn sewing machine on her head, I probably would love hers. <laughs> but also, Lawrence's is a little bit uh, similar to things she's done. And Bimini's seems like I have not seen Bimini do anything like this. So I'm going to also give it to Bimini. Yeah. Um, who had the weakest look for you? The weakest look, um, I would say taste because it didn't fit. Um, it didn't fit, right? Like it didn't fit the category. It looked so much different from everyone else. Um, and so just for that fact alone, I mean, it's a great look. It's, you know, it's pretty, but it just didn't fit. It's great. Great. Yeah. Great. Like if you saw her out, you'd be like, girl, I'd be like, <laughs> I, if I saw this girl, I'd be like, I'd be like, oh, you're wearing a, a leotard. Anyway, nice to meet you. It was really nice to meet you. But I mean, it's not, is it great sugar? I mean, great. I mean, it's not great. I mean, it looks good. I mean, it's you not said like, great, bitch. You just said I, it's great. <laughs> it's fine. I think it does. Look, look, it's definitely it's like a costume piece, right? Like it looks great, like just like a costume thing, but it's not like. Wait, is it great or is it not great, Sugar? <laughs> a big part of going on the show is me fighting with my guests, and me and you are fighting right now. I want to know: Is Tastes look great or is it not? Which one is it? Oh, like you mean as a look? I think. It, you see her in the club wearing this. <laughs> you just randomly see this queen wearing this. Are you gonna be like, damn girl, you look great? Um, I, I mean, if her if she wasn't painted like that, fine, fine, fine. You win. I wouldn't say it looked great. If she had a beaut if she was painted like she normally is painted and she was wearing the outfit, I'd be like, you look great, but mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think that Taze, I think Taze had the, the weakest look and it was not, Agreed. it was not a serve and it, yeah. it just did not. Okay, first of all, this Mickey bit is going on way, it's going on way too Yeah, long. yeah. Hip as a judge, I was like over it. First of all, I can't understand a thing he is saying. Like, not I- Not even a word. Not, not even a word. I don't even know what he's doing. Uh, but yeah, girl, like, no, like, mm-mm. So they go back to the, show, the to the main stage. We find out that um, Bimini Bamboo Lash has won four repeated badges. Bimini is officially the most decorated queen in Drag Race yes. UK in both seasons. No queen has won more repeater badges. And she lip synced first. This is major. I mean, I'm going to say right now, I was Team Lawrence. And I, I still think Lawrence is great. Yeah. But I think in terms of RuPaul's Drag Race, Right now, I think that Bimini is more suited to win, which is crazy. I've I've been seeing Lawrence up until I mean from the from the Meet the Queens Meet the Queen. up until this episode, but now I'm like, wow, Bimini is not fucking with you hoes. Bimini's not here to play any games. Not the last episode, but the one before. That's when I was like, oh, Bimini is like like coming so strong, and I think like yeah. she really kind of sealed the deal. Like I mean, you know, like. This I know, like it's a, there's only one more episode left. Like, what can you do? Like, I I don't know. Like, she's she's just done so well, and she's like so lovable. Bimini, I think Bimini is gonna win based off of where she's at. Like, she's my ticket to win. So they go back on the main stage. Ellie and Taze are in the bottom, and this is like first of all, when Ellie's big ass hit that cartwheel into a dip, I gagged. <laughs> It turned into a ball in like two seconds. Girl, when Ellie's six foot five ass went head over heels over head and hit a dip, I said, oh my, not in Scott. I said, is this, is this how they do it in Dundee? That girl, and like, but I live because the song, I mean, the song, I it just did not fit the song, but she no. was like, I'm pulling all this out. She was like, I'm gonna give you Vogue the house down to this like sleepy, like UK disco track. Girl, <laughs> I was I was like, bitch from the legendary house of Haggis. She was like, also the crunchy uh Vogue, I, I was So if I'm being honest with myself, I genuinely think, gen I genuinely think that Ellie beat Taste in that lip sync. I really do. Yeah. yeah, like Taste is Taste is amazing. Like she's really but she's done it like three times already, right? And so Bitch, like four. That, that was her fourth lip sync. This was her fourth, yeah. So this was her fourth. She's going Taste has been like, in the bottom. Taste has been in the bottom as many times as Bimini has won. 
Okay. <laughs> 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 Bitch, takes yeah. it to the bottom as many times as Bimini has fucking yeah. won. That is wild that to is me. That is crazy. And, and I feel like they could not really... This is my theory. They could not justify sending Ellie to the finale and not taste. So they just said, both of you stay. That's what I think. When they said that she was staying, I'm not going to lie. I was screaming and clapping because I was like, I didn't see that coming. Like, at all. I, like I was I was finishing up my makeup and I literally went. <laughs> yes. I was like looking at myself because I have my, my iPad here. And I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Ellie, you, Shantae, you stay too. What? I looked at myself in the mirror like, this is, a, this is too much. <laughs> and here's the thing. The question is, do you, who do you send to the finale? The girl who has zero wins or the mm-hmm. girl who's been in the bottom four times? And apparently the answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs> Chug, thank you so much for joining me on First Person Impressions. What are you up to these days? What's going on? Where can we find you? Thank you. Um, I am, right now, you can find me in my house in this room <laughs> in front of my laptop. Um, I've just been like hanging out, hanging low. I'm actually finally going to perform soon. Um, I have a show coming up in Connecticut at the end of March. So if you're on the East Coast, um, follow me on Instagram. I'm posting all my stuff there. So it'll be the first time performing in a year. So I'm super excited. Um, but I'm just, you know, working on digital content and that's, that's about it. Work. Nice and easy. Listen, if you're, if you're anything like me, you are also trying to, uh, Forge papers to make it look like you work in a restaurant so you can get a vaccine. <laughs> and I'm, I'm I'm about to sneak my ass down to Kaiser and be like, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna sneak in and be like, I work at the devil. They're like, bitch, you're Bob the fucking drag queen. <laughs> yes, I live. I mean, it's coveted. They call them the vaccine lurkers. You, apparently, you can go to a vaccine site at the close of the day and try to get what's left over. I mean, it, it is real. <laughs> I'm going to show I'm, up and drag. I'm about to go down to Hamburger Mary's and be like, I will work a shift if you <laughs> write me a check. <laughs> <laughs> I need this vaccine, man. I need this vaccine. Please, Girl. please, man. Please. Some <laughs> other guy. Hey, man, I got some Moderna, 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 Johnson & Johnson, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, Pfizer, Pfizer. Um, thank you all for watching at home as well. Join us next week and we'll be reviewing the finale of RuPaul's Drag Race UK season two. Sugar again, thank you. I love you. Thank you. Bye.